Now, sometimes a project is so cool, it doesn't matter that it's not about camera equipment, it doesn't matter that it's not about DIY film gear. We're gonna copper coat this steel bike. So there's a guy called Robert Murray Smith and he's a chemist and he's devised this incredible way of copper coating steel. He does quite like it if you give him credit though. So you want to have enough brain, enough sense, enough common decency to give credit where credit is due. I came onto the idea from Laura, Laura. She explained it in a much more easy to digest way. And this sounded like alchemy to me. Um, I'm putting it on a bicycle. I will explain the science of it in uh, all sorts of interesting cutaways. But uh, first of all, we have to completely degrease it. I've stripped it of all of its paint. I'm gonna get some acetone and I'm gonna try and get all of the grease off it before we coffee coat it. So let's get going. It's amazing. You sand down a bike, try and make it as shiny as you can with wet and dry and steel wool, and then you take all the grease off and you realise just how shiny it is. Basically what we're doing here, we wipe it down with tissue paper until when you wipe it down the tissue paper comes back clean. I think it's clean. And this process is a little bit too complicated for me to try and present and to do at the same time, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do it all in voiceover. Here comes the science. So for this project you're going to need scales, distilled water, copper oxide, formic acid and a heat source. 10 grams of copper. Into 100 ml of distilled water. 20 ml of formic acid. I chose a slow cooker which I wouldn't recommend. Eventually I replaced it with a camping stove which worked much better. And now for the moment of truth. Ridiculous. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Robert. This is incredible. Look at that. I've never seen anything like it. I'm copy coating a steel bicycle. That is I think one of the coolest things I've ever done. Fun fact about formic acid, they used to make it by boiling barrels of fire ants, which says two things. There are some really sick puppies in the world and wear gloves. So yesterday we did the copper and um, it didn't catch everywhere. There's bits of it that are really thick and really beautiful and really smooth and there's bits of it that are still really grey. I rubbed it down with some steel wool. The steel wool took loads of it off, uh, which obviously means it hasn't stuck very well. I thought this was a chemical process, um, but uh, that also might be because I didn't degrease it properly. So today I'm gonna degrease it much more thoroughly and I'm gonna give it a second coat because I figure the bits of steel that are still raw steel will still catch. Obviously the science community can tell me that it won't, but uh, you can do that in the comments. Um, Let's get going. I think it might also have had something to do with the amount of stuff I had on the brush, because obviously the blue liquid wasn't doing a great deal, but the powder was, so maybe I need to make sure that I've got a well-loaded brush every time I'm coating it on. Um, we'll see, because I'm sure it can be thicker than this. It doesn't have to be shiny, because eventually this is going to go green, and it's going to be a beautiful green I think it's a variegated bicycle, but uh, oh, the latent heat of evaporation on my fingers. So my understanding of the chemistry is that this recipe creates a solution of copper nanoparticles. The acid attacks the copper oxide and turns it into copper formate. The copper formate then turns into particulate copper. This works with mild steel because the iron present in the steel picks the iron off the copper formate and replaces it with copper. The layer is very thin, but as it's decorative, my plan is to wait for it to go green and clear coated. Now, if you're into recycled bike builds, except for the tires and the chain, this bike is 100% recycled. I got all the components from my local recycling center, so nearly everything you can see here was heading for landfill. This bike is just about to take me on a 420 mile, 675 kilometer bike tour across Finland as part of the Midnight Sun Gravel Tour. And I'd say proof that it had not lived its best life yet.
The Brooks is from all my bikes. I swap it from one to the other because once you've made it fit your ass, there's simply no comparison. I did my best to DIY the tools as well. I know you can buy expensive headset tools. I feel like you're not getting any tighter. But a split pipe will knock the old cups out and a threaded rod with some wing nuts does a wonderful job for next to nothing. The forks are aluminium, I see no reason to coat them. Some things I did buy, like grease. I couldn't find hydraulic discs anywhere in the recycling bin, so I went for V's on the front. They have all the stopping power I need and more. Loctite bloody everywhere. This is an old Monarch frame from the 60s, so the rear brakes are caliper. But again, I used them on my single speed for years and I've had no issues, so I'm still happy. Everyone tells you not to use red Loctite because it takes heat to get it off. But as I never want these to come loose, I'm happy. Dodgy old Swedish forward threaded brackets mean they undo themselves, so a lot more Loctite is required. It's 10 o'clock, it's minus one. We're gonna turn that into this. These Shimano SPDs are 10 years old. I bought them for my single speed, but that bike was for London. So I quickly replaced them with flip-flop SPDs for nights out and so on. So these are spare and now they're shiny. This is a 7-speed X7, we'll see how that fares. I chucked some granny tyres on the old girl, they're 2840s and they're a good balance between skinny and comfy. The gravel I'm riding is mostly well-maintained roads, very little single track and very little tarmac. The next bit I'm rather fond of. That's right, it's handmade lambskin bar tape. Suede lined, of course. The suede is from a charity shop skirt that I bought from a previous project. The lambskin's not technically recycled, but I bought it for another project and never used it, so I'm making use of it now. Waste not, what not. Hopefully the lamb had a good life. I pre-rolled the top half of the bars with some old bar tape because I really like a thick, soft handlebar roll. Now I'm making a whole film about this next bit, but I thought I'd include it in the bike build because it's the best bit. Have you ever tried to film your friends with a drone and then had to catch them up afterwards? No? I have. See you on the road, or better still, on the Midnight Sun Gravel Tour.